Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending March 19th. This show is just going to be on one subject because this is a subject that I've been interested in a long time because I have some experience as an electronic hobbyist building electronic circuits and a lot of the information that I'm going to be talking about is out of this month's article from New Scientist and I'll put a link to the article. It's entitled GPS Chaos, How a $30 Box Can Jam Your Life. I know a lot of people talk about how the internet can be a problem with people hacking the internet and cause all kinds of disruptions to people's lives and uh, disruptions to business and even electronic uh, electrical, electrical grids and stuff like that. Well, I'm thinking right now what I see is the biggest danger on the horizon really is somebody actually jamming the GPS system because it's so trivial to do. If you were ever an electronics hobbyist as a kid like me, building a transmitter is not a difficult thing to do. I mean, it's a matter of maybe $10 or less worth of parts at a Radio Shack store to throw together a transmitter. And especially if you're building it as a jammer type of transmitter, it doesn't have to, have to be built or tuned very well. Basically, you just want to throw out a lot of radio waves on the frequency you're trying to jam. And because of GPS being such a weak signal by the time it reaches the receivers, these satellites, if you don't realize that these satellites are 20,000 kilometers up in the sky, which is quite a distance away. As a matter of fact, just to put it in perspective, 20,000 kilometers probably doesn't mean a lot to, to most people. It's about 12,000 miles, but you could actually take another Earth and put on top of our Earth, and it still wouldn't touch the satellites. That's how far they are away, and they broadcast with less than 50 watts of energy. So by the time the signal gets all the distance down to the GPS receivers, it's actually barely above the background noise that um, it has to overcome just to be able to, to get a signal out. So it's amazing in a way that they even work effectively. And they're also required, your receiver is required to pick up at least four of the satellites at a time to be able to give you an accurate reading. Now there's 24 satellites in orbit functioning and four backup satellites. So. Um, that's the total of the satellites that are in orbit so that four can be viewed from pretty much any place on the surface of the Earth. So anyway, the problem is right now that even besides electronic hobbyists, you can go on the Internet and for as little as $30 you can buy one of these jammer units from China. And a lot of truck drivers now are using them to disable the GPS locating devices where the truck companies track them. Other people are using it to... Uh, um, conceal illegal shipments that they don't want tracked and other different purposes like that. People are using these jamming devices. But another thing that you may not realize is the GPS doesn't just provide a location signal. It's also used for timing. Um, just as an example, in January of 2007, the Navy was doing a test in San Diego Harbor and they uh, wanted to find out what it would be like if communications were lost. So they jammed radio frequencies and also forgotten jammed the GPS frequencies too over a big large part of San Diego and they shut down a bunch of different systems besides people's cell phones going out they also had ATMs going out people weren't even able to have access to their money and they wondered at first why was that that an ATM machine why would an ATM machine need GPS it's it's stationary it's not moving well it needs the time signal and what's more accurate than an atomic clock which is what the GPS satellites provide is an atomic clock um, type of accuracy. Cell phone towers need it too because they do handoffs between the calls. That has to be precise and it has to be timed very accurately so they need atomic clock type of accuracy. So they use the GPS signal just for timing. Wall Street uses it for doing financial transactions. So the GPS is not just being relied on for location, it's being relied on for anything that needs an accurate time. So when it goes down these things basically with failsafe they just basically shut down and don't function. So anyway, we're becoming so reliant on something that is so easily, easily jammed. And I am thinking in the future we need to come up with something. We used to have a system, and I guess they're talking on a newer version of it, called Loran, which uses ground-based transmitters, which are quite a bit more powerful and uh, a little bit harder to jam. But I would really like to see us get away from relying on radio frequencies, at least as... Um, being the only way that we can possibly navigate and use for time signals and would like to see us go to maybe a backup system that doesn't even rely on radio frequency at all. If you look in this article, they have as a possible backup a thing called um, inertial, I think it's, let me get the exact word of it here, um, it's called 
inertial measurement units. And what it does basically is if you start out in a known location, all you have to do if you know where you're starting out from is if you have an accurate enough handheld device that can measure the time, the speed, the distance, um, basically you just, it's a set of computations and the direction obviously too, um, you can basically calculate where you are anywhere along the way. Uh, right now they do a, they have a large test unit they were testing out but it tends to be um, after an hour it loses accuracy and after about an hour it's only accurate to about 1.5 kilometers but that's just the first test unit if later on they can perfect this um, with technology which they should be able to do you may be able to have a unit that doesn't rely on any kind of an external source other than just the um, initial accurate measurement of where you begin from and from there on you could travel for an entire day and know your location and everything like that it would just uh, require obviously an atomic uh, something close to the accuracy of an atomic clock built into the handheld device but that does seem to be a doable thing another thing they're talking about and if you want to read something interesting at the end of the article they talk about you could also even use lightning strikes because um, they say there's about 2,000 storms active on the planet at any one time and actually using calculations of lightning strikes and where they are occurring they could just modify GPS receivers to also use them along with the satellites if for some reason the satellites weren't working you could switch over to use the uh, lightning strike method of actually uh, coordinating I imagine just like anything else that uses triangulation once you get three or four lightning strikes you can just basically uh, triangulate your distances from all the different um, places it struck and then give yourself a location to within so much accuracy so anyway I just wanted to let people know that that's something you probably should be concerned about because I think right now it is pretty much our most vulnerable system that we're relying on not just for location not just you know people think if it's disrupted oh well that's just an inconvenience for people on the road going to their destinations no it can actually shut down a huge amount of our infrastructure so that's about it for this week thanks a lot for listening I will catch you next week